As all the recap films start wrapping up, we get closer and closer to that February 9th release date, along with a bit more sneak peek footage. In the latest slew of clips, we got a short 30 second trailer depicting events that seem to highlight a major plot point of the movie. So let's do as we usually do, and take apart this trailer frame by frame, and see if we can get a better grasp on what to expect from this upcoming film. And if I miss anything, then feel free to let us know in the comments. Now, let's begin. Right from the get-go, they hit us with a pretty big info bomb. One is that we have a confirmed time period of two years after the Zero Requiem. We hear Suzaku doing a little voiceover, and he says that the world peace that Lelouch created through the Zero Requiem suddenly collapsed. So before even getting into any of the visuals, they're already undermining everything that Lelouch had fought tooth and nail for in the first two seasons. Just like that, gone. I know world peace isn't a plausible thing, but goddamn, this is, this is just sad. I would hope that they'd give us a decent reason for this, something more than just your typical power struggle, but I guess we'll see. So as we hear Suzaku talking about the world peace that was created, the first clip we see is of a group of flags, most likely the flags representing the countries of the world, all hung together to showcase their alliance during this momentary time of world peace. Surprisingly enough, None of the flags from the previous seasons like the Chinese Federations, Britannias, or Europias can be found here. So perhaps all the international superpowers that once held control of the world are now disbanded. Then we see a repeat scene of the doves flying through the forest and mountain regions, which I now believe to be is in South Tyrol, Italy, or at least based off of that region. A commenter by the name of Alex Sim found a landscape picture that matched the area very closely to what we had seen in the previous trailer. This next shot is most likely just a nice little homage to Lelouch and his Zero Persona, considering the purple-yellow color scheme and the intricate line designs. It could be a workplace for previous members of the Black Knights, something of a hideout, or just a little cafe serving as a nice easter egg. Then we snap to another flash of text that translates to something along the lines of our peaceful daily lives, as Suzaku speaks about the Zero Requiem failing. Then we have a shot of Zero, most likely just Suzaku in Zero's costume followed quickly by yet another flash of text continuing the previous one, and this translates to a message of something like, our peaceful daily lives come to an end. From this point is where they start to showcase two different plot lines through a series of alternating clips. One set of clips shows a story involving Suzaku and Nanomi, and the other involves C2 and the weird new entity. If we focus first on Suzaku and Nanomi's side of things, it gets pretty interesting because Suzaku's voiceover of the next few clips speaks of a new enemy in the form of this country of Jirokstan, referred to by Suzaku as a nation of warriors. He then goes on to say that this new enemy has set their sights towards Nunnally and Zero, and this is fairly apparent by the next few scenes. Here we see a rather shocked Nunnally. She's dressed in a fairly diplomatic manner, so my guess would be that she's the representative or peace ambassador for New Britannia and is making these trips all around the world to meet all the other world leaders. Then when they make their rounds to Jirikstan, it looks like they get ambushed by a bunch of different modeled nightmare frames from the previous seasons. You've got the Akatsuki mass-produced models from India, the Sutherlands and Gloucesters from Britannia, I'm not sure what those two are in the corner, but the thing to note here is that these nightmare frames, though once distinguished which international power you were fighting for, are in this shot used freely by the same nation. So Nunnally gets ambushed, and she's about to be taken hostage with this really flashy and tanky new nightmare leading the charge. He's got two bulky Captain America shield-like shoulder plates, and what seems to be a detachable weapon strapped onto his back. Another unique one that makes an appearance is this flight and hover-capable green one that's dropping flares. It's rather hard to make out though, so I can't really say much else on it. We then get a really good look at Suzaku's new nightmare as he charges in to go protect Nunnally from this ambush. He's rocking the colors of Zero, so it's most likely that this is supposed to be known as Zero's Nightmare to everyone else. He also has his dual swords as usual, along with his signature projectiles which we can make out very briefly in this clip here. But as this nightmare rushes by, and we get a closer look at the details, I'm fairly certain that this is just a revamped version of Lelouch's Shinkiro. Just the arm designs and the top of the helmet seem to have been redesigned. Everything else looks to be rather similar. Let's skip the mysterious elevator shaft, because I think this relates to the other side of things. Next we have Suzaku taking off the Zero Mask while in his nightmare, perhaps trying to negotiate with the ambushers. Then I suppose this new character that we see could be the leader of the Jirokstan army, but to me he just looks like a weird combination of Shinkei and Detard with a green color palette. However, in comparison to this guy who is I'm guessing to be the pilot of the tanky red and white nightmare, he seems much more noble. 
so I'm a bit hesitant to consider him as part of this rogue nation that's targeting Nunnally and Zero, and instead he could be related to the other story, perhaps a part of the faction that's hunting C2. Let's skip this part, and now we're back to Suzaku in combat with the new enemies' main nightmare. It's most likely a clip from right before Suzaku loses in combat to this guy, since after that we see a pretty beat up Suzaku while he appears to be in captivity. But if that wasn't an obvious enough hint, then how about some big bold text saying the strongest knight defeated, followed by a captured and very beat up looking Suzaku with all types of other kinky shit going on. The more important thing to note here though, is that he's still wearing the Zero uniform. Well, what's left of it anyway. It seems like they captured Suzaku straight out of his nightmare, and then they sent him straight to this interrogation, meaning that whoever has him captured believes now that the identity to Zero is Suzaku, or they now know the truth of the Zero Requiem. I don't believe that Suzaku would be the type to reveal Lelouch's master plan, but if someone was close enough to the events of the Requiem to know it well, then I think that they'd be able to piece together that Suzaku and Lelouch were working together this whole time to form this elaborate plan. What these people will now do with that information is a whole nother story. Okay, so that's the first set of events that are being portrayed. Not only in Suzaku get captured by the enemy, Zero's identity is revealed, and the whole Requiem is potentially unraveled. It'll be interesting to see if this release of information was what caused the end of the short period of world peace. Now, in this next set of events, things are even more vague. We have the new being who I thought last analysis to be the physical embodiment of the collective unconscious trying to get revenge. Basically God, but that's still a very baseless theory though. Then this mysterious elevator shaft could lead to a number of plausible things. It could be one of the old Gios research labs surrounding a thought elevator, it could be the prison that they're holding Suzaku, who knows. Next we see some stealthy armored soldiers that seem to be part of a more established faction than the Jerksten army since they have a more professional apparel in comparison to these foot soldiers from the earlier ambush clip. Potentially soldiers for the green haired noble as well as could be the people that are chasing after C2. And finally, they close it off with our favorite action scene of C2. As I said last time, she is wearing an outfit that would indicate the country that she's in though I don't plan on making an uncultured guess. Still though, we can tell by the arm sleeve of the person that's holding the knife that it's not one of the soldiers from the last clip. It could potentially be a friend who followed C2 on her journey and just decided to show up now. And that's all the clips that we got so far. There is one last thing to note though, and it's that nowhere in this trailer was Lelouch to be seen, which puts into question whether or not Lelouch will even show himself in the film. There's certainly a lot of theories floating around supporting the survival of Lelouch, the most popular being the Code theories. However, an avid fan of Code Geass linked me an extensive Reddit post by the user Geass by Lelouch, basically going over in a three-part essay why the Code theories have been debunked by existing information. So if you'd like to read over that perspective, one that supports claims that Lelouch is truly dead and will stay dead, then you can find that in the description below. But other than that, I don't think there's too much else to say. At this point, it's just a whole bunch of speculation, though now we do have a better grasp on where the story is going. The Zero Requiem only lasting two years though is a little bit depressing, but if they do have a reasonable cause for it, then I think I'd be okay with it. I find it a bit more shocking that Suzaku was actually captured while as Zero, though that should add a nice twist of events into the mix. Anyway, I'm sure you all have your own theories, so be sure to let me know what your thoughts on the trailer was, as well as what you think is going to happen. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this type of anime content, then you already know what to do. So, until next time, ciao!